off a huge weekend at Sha Tin. We head to Happy Valley for Wednesday night's programme and our feature race is the Hong Kong Football Club Centenary Cup. A very warm welcome to the show. Got a lot to look back and a lot to look forward to here on Racing to Win. I'm Angela Jern, joined here in the studio by Paul Lally, our former analyst and race caller, Brett Davis as well. And Brett will We'll come back to the weekend in a second mm. or so, but it's a decent lineup, isn't it? Happy Valley Wednesday night. Absolutely, Andrew. Yes, yeah, C plus three course on offer for the eight race car. There's, of course, the feature, as Andrew mentioned, the Hong Kong Football Club Centenary Cup. But to go with that, there's a couple of class two races as well that uh, bring out some of the best of them at Happy Valley. So we'll be looking forward to that. It will be a little bit on the cool side, but there'll be some hot racing. Uh, well, and um, 3.8 into the triple trio will warm you up as well, Paul. Ooh. Good start, isn't it? It's not bad, especially if you get it. Um, so, yeah, 3.8 for the triple trio. And uh, there's also a little bonus in the sixth one as well of about 800,000. So maybe not a little bit. A couple of first starters thrown in there as well. And uh, a decent class too, I thought, yeah. uh, as well. So some, some good racing there. Yeah, race number seven on the programme. Finish off with a class three as well over the 1,200 metres. So good racing all round at Happy Valley. Before we get into that, though, let's look back on the weekend action from Sha Tin. Of course, it was the first leg of the Hong Kong Speed Series and the first leg of the Triple Crown as well. Sunday's two Group 1s at Sha Tin showcased the current stars of Hong Kong racing. John Sires looked to have a stranglehold on the first of the features, the centenary sprint cap over 1,200 metres. However, it was not quite the result most had expected, as DB Pin defeated Mr Stunning and reversed the placings from last month's Hong Kong sprint. Inside the final 200 they go, and it's Mr Stunning who takes it up to DB Pin. Beat the clock is finishing really strongly as well. Mr Stunning flagging, DB Pin is reeling him in. DB Pin, the new kid on the block, got there. Sizes three runners in the race for the first three over the line, while there was also a significant moment for rider Olivier Deleuze, whose last win at the top level was on board Rich Tapestry in the 2014 Santa Anita Sprint Championship. If early season someone would have told me that I will win a Group 1 this year, when it's already very hard to get and stay on the, on the horse in a Class 5 race, you know, Hong Kong is very competitive, has been here a long time, and uh, people like new face, and that's just the game. There is no, no hard feeling uh, at all, you know. Uh, I have my time, and uh, I still enjoy it. And of course, when you have the chance to sit on a horse like that, it makes uh, the best of it, you know. And you forget the hard time. So after DB Pins triumph in the Group 1 Centenary Sprint Cup, the big race action continued with the Stewart's Cup. And this time, luck was on the side of Season Blue. Seasons Bloom who's taken it up here. Were the battling hard. Beauty Generation in for the fight. 50-50 as well. But it's Seasons Bloom hanging on. Seasons Bloom by three quarters to win. It was another Group 1 win for the Drought Breakers, with Seasons Bloom providing Danny Shum with his first major win since Little Bridges Heroics at Royal Ascot in 2012. While it was also his first win at international Group 1 level on home soil. 200 metres to go, I was already in front, maybe a little bit too early, but he proves himself that he's one of the best horses. Even if he got in front a bit too early, he was always going to finish off the race strong, strong enough to win. As for those behind Seasons Bloom, there was cause to be optimistic for the future, especially for third place getter Werther, as he prepares for the Hong Kong Gold Cup next month. Better draw might have been a different result, but we make no excuses. A more suitable 2,000 metres next start will be, will be ready to go. The group racing action continues next Sunday at Sha Tin with the running of the Group 3 Centenary Vars over 1,800 metres. Yeah, looking forward to, to that. Well, let's look back um, on that uh, programme, outstanding, really. Let's start with um, world's best sprinter, DB Pin. Well, it's a big call, Andrew. <laughs> it's a big call. I don't think there's a huge difference between uh, DB Pin, Mr Stunning. I must say, I thought Beat the Clock was a, a tremendous three-year-old. He's come back, obviously, a lot, lot better as a four-year-old. Mm. That's twice now he's reeled off a 21.5-ish type final 400. So... Uh, they're rare, those types of horses. He might even progress to be better than uh, than the two I've mentioned already. But um, John Sy's great afternoon, first, second, third. And well done to Olivia Deleuze. Of course, not that long ago, Olivia took some time off, went to Sweden, had a, a major operation, I believe, on his shoulder to get back to full fitness. And uh, great to see him with another Group 1. Outstanding lineup in the Stewards' Cup as, as well, Paul. And um, I say Werther was a huge run, but ultimately it was uh, Seasons Bloom and his, uh, his crowning moment. It was good because he had that, those issues, didn't he? And uh, leading into the race, uh, International Day, he won well. 50-50 um, ran very well, I thought, as well. And Werther 
little wry smile on his face there from uh, Hugh Bowman when he weighed in. Yeah, season's bloom. Danny Shum attributed it to uh, the freshness of the horse going in. He had some, obviously, some issues last start with, uh, with blood in the track here. But 50-50 and beat the clock were the two that were rising and had to step up, and they both did in tremendous fashion. Yeah, it's a super effort from Southern uh, Legend as yes. well, grabbing fourth place. And uh, Baltic Whisper was very good on debut as well. So it was a fantastic uh, program on Sunday. Another good one coming up as well this weekend. But as far as uh, Happy Valley is concerned, it's an eight-race program. Um, we're going to have a look at um, all of the cards in a moment, right after our course, our horses to follow. Loads of first starters, uh, Paul. A few exposed types as well on the weekend. What do you find, though? Well, I found a really an old boy. One of, an old favourite of mine was all great friends. He's coming to Chartin, but he, he's a Happy Valley uh, horse. There's no question. So when he gets back to Happy Valley, he's going to be very tough to beat. You can just see him here. He was still in front of the 200 metre mark, and he gave a really good sight. He stuck on nicely enough for fourth. On a course, it doesn't really suit him. Uh, he's got that short sprint, and when he gets back to Happy Valley, he's going to take all types of beating, I thought. thought it was a really good run uh, in this particular race for a few of the other horses, but I did really like the way that he uh, stuck on nicely. And Radiant Steed's obviously a horse that's um, turned the corner, isn't he, with the mm. two, two strong wins. Mm. Yeah, super efforts uh, from him. Not much between the other two. What do you got, Brad? I'm going to go with the former American galloper in Mark Cooler, who ran slightly better the start before, and... Went around at a huge price here, and there he is with a big white face down on the rail, and he drives through here, and for a moment he really tested Everest over the final stages, but of course Everest had that seven-pound claim for Matthew Poon. But this is the first sign we've really seen from Mark Cooler outside of the little glimmer last start, but he's certainly come on. We know him probably better for his efforts really on the sort of the poly track and the dirt, really being in a former American, but... He might have more than uh, one string to his bow, and he looks like he's found some form. All right, OK. Mark Hula goes into the black book. Uh, for me, well, I'll go to race number three. I've picked out one horse here in uh, Bingo Hero, but there was a number of first starters here. Handsome Bobo, white face on the speed behind the eventual winner, 80-80. It was a huge etch effort, actual fact, by Glittering Armour, who runs second. He's on debut. But just look at Bingo Hero as he lets down down the outside ran the fastest last split, and his two last splits combined were the quickest um, as well. Um, I think he's going to appreciate the step up in trip um, also when he gets it. He's by start winners, plenty of speed there, but uh, there's, there's stamina on the dam side. So uh, just late, this is where he really starts to pick up, and I think, uh, say, with a step up in trip, you can probably follow them all, but mm. uh, he might be the one to, uh, to side with going forward. Right, those are the horses uh, to follow. Suspensions. Lucky guy and Eddie Lai, breach, breach, I should say, of Rule 102. Six days he got for that. Was that he was actually an eye-catching run himself. It's, um, yeah, breach 102 is actually not riding the horse out to the satisfaction of the stewards, which is why he got the six meetings. Um, lucky guy could have potentially almost finished third in that race, so um, that's the situation there with his suspension. All right, that's uh, Eddie Lai. OK, eight-race programme then we have at Happy Valley on uh, Wednesday night at uh, the City Circuit. Feature race comes up as race number four, and we're on the C plus three as well, so the widest possible placement for the rail. We start off with a class four over the 1,000 metres, and headed by winning supreme Jack Wong, taking five pounds off last start win on the all-weather. Logan Wong gets the blinkers on for his debut, as does Oriental Elites, four-year-old by Star Witness. Gracious Rider is a course winner here at uh, June over the 1,200 metres. Peace combination, Douglas White will jump from barrier six. Snasher Shook was beaten favourite when he returned last time out. Luna Zephyr from a low draw, and our honour, who uh, needs to improve on his uh, last start effort behind all best friends. Well, Luna Zephyr has the uh, services of Joe Marrera jumping aboard again, and he's got barrier number three, so he could establish the lead. First Butte has some blinkers going on, so that could see him a little bit closer in the run. Winning Supreme, we know, was a winner last start on the all-weather, but that was over the 1,200. It's going to be a bit sharper for him here, but he'll um, you know, be looking to sort of press forward, but only good the possible speed here over the 1,000. Here's uh, Orin to Elite. He's a first starter. He's had two trials in New Zealand, and then he's had three trials here. He's 11.56 uh, pounds. He's drawn barrier 10 for his debut run. Paul O'Sullivan uh, trains him, so thought I'd highlight him. Logan One is another um, a horse that's uh, having his first start. The blinkers go on him for the first time. Tommy Berry will take them out. He's at a neat 1,000 pounds. He's had two trials last season uh, and had a few this as well. And here is uh, this horse, uh, First Butte. The blinkers go on for the first time. You can see he's quite keen there. Um, he's the one in front, the 22. 
And he's also won a trial over a thousand metres before. Barrier five for him. He's an interesting runner for me. All right, we'll come back to him in a second. Let's start with some winning form, though, and that is a winning supreme. This is on the all weather, of course, and it's over 1,200 metres. Drops back to the thousand. Jack takes five pounds off. Yep, uh, me too. We know uh, knows how to get them to win on the all weather track and winning supreme. Did actually run OK over 1,400 metres behind Nam Jong plus a few starts ago. He was very much in the betting on this night and sat outside the lead and charged away final stages. The uh, the horse having its second start, Elite Boy, closed the gap, but obviously the all-weather was a bit of a liking for him, so it's a change of surface now and distance, a couple of little queries. Yeah, I've kept them in for fourth, on a fourth line, because a lot of these horses can come from the all-weather back to, to Happy Valley. All right, tries the 1,000 here for the, uh, the first time. Um, showing character here finished off strongly. Luna Zephyr and First Butte. This is behind Zero Hedge, who we'll see later, actually. This is a good run from showing character. His performance prior to this was ordinary, but he closed off well. Luna Zephyr looks like he's going to lead and take some catching. And First Butte, you're going to throw him in, Paul? Yeah, he'd, uh, uh, he had no form here, but he's had no form in both the starts. But I think the blinkers have really done the trick for him. He'll be a big price, but mm. um, I think he's worth taking a chance with when he comes here to Happy Valley. He's had an experience. And he has won that trial over 1,000. All right, Keith Young will be in the saddle as well. He was stood down on uh, Sunday, but he's back and riding again on Wednesday night. So uh, let's look at one of the debutants here in Oriental Elites. Um, this is finishing fifth on this occasion. He's looked all right in his trials. Yeah, he hasn't looked too bad. He's 11.56 pounds, as I mentioned earlier on. His track work's been OK. Sometimes Paulo Sullivan's horses need a run, but uh, he wasn't really pushed out in this one. Um, yeah, both the newcomers, I think, are going to gain from the experience. There's going to be a lot of pace here early. Of the two newcomers, I think this guy's clearly the selection, but I haven't got him in the tips. Uh, Logan, one, for me, has really struggled from what I've seen. So, um, of the two, if there's going to be one surprise, it might come from him as opposed to the other one. The horse winning that trial was uh, Baltic Whisper. Of course, one on the weekend. Uh, this is the Happy Bunch. Yep, this is um, a horse that's got the blinkers going on for the first time and the tongue tie. Now, there were a few trials from him before he debuted that suggested there was a little bit of ability there. He was sort of edged uh, out in the final stages, but I'm going to sneak him in because I do think there is something there with the Happy Bunch. I'm going to judge him a little bit on those initial trials. He didn't do a great deal on his debut, but it's not a strong race. Yeah, I, I left him out because of the draw. Barrier 9, I just thought it was a bit awkward for him. All right, OK, yeah, yep, 1,000 metre dash. They got a longish run to that first turn, though, so uh, where did you go, Paul? I, did, I went with this uh, first beard. I'm going to make him the long shot and we'll, we'll get off uh, nice and early here because I just really like his work with the blinkers on and he has won a trial as well. So we'll get him to beat the favourite, Luna Zephyr, who will probably come up pretty short and has had his chance this season. Now she should get, should get the best run in the race. He should get a really nice run from his barrier number one just in behind. And we'll give winning Supreme a chance on the surface. But eight each way for me in this. Yeah, fair enough. It looks a pretty open race. I'll side with Luna Zephyr because he'll be up in front and he'll be ones uh, they have to run down. I've got winning Supreme in as a danger. Peace Combination rarely runs bad races of this calibre and distance. And the happy bunch, I'll sneak him in to uh, run a better race. I'm happy to play a trio here. Bank of the 11 and work around the 1, 5, 7. I'll throw in the 9, Nasha Shook as well because he'll go in second up with a good draw. Yeah, I think Kurt Luna Zeff will take the world of beating. I do like Oriental Elite, though. I think the trials have been OK. All right, let's first uh, race down. We'll take a short break, come back with a second on the other side of this. <laughs>